So when you're working with a proportional grid and drawing across the page, um, what you do with the seated figure is you keep the torso basically the same, keep the midpoint the same, and then you bring the legs up. If the figure is bending, you keep the legs where they are and move the head down. Um, that way the center kind of stays in one spot, and that usually helps keep you anchored as far as how your proportions are going. Um, as always, you start with the same basic process, and that's just start with the framework. Here, he's kind of slouched over forward, so we're looking to create a forward fold in the pose. And that'll be kind of the main thing to try to get across. Um, that is expressive of the whole attitude of everything, and everything else kind of just hangs down. Whenever you have a seated figure, it's going to include whatever they're sitting on, so they're not just this sort of um, floating, seating-looking thing. Um, and when you go in and work on small details, remember, you're just kind of creating a map. Um, you know, a six-inch figure is, like, really too small to try to get a lot of detail uh, really, re in really tight areas. Um, so you have to kind of adjust and come up with your shorthand for how all that works. Um, as you progress into the forms, you know, you're trying to create forms that work along with that initial fold in the attitude of the pose. So here, uh, everything I'm doing is to basically emphasize that. So with the legs, you know, they're projecting out and spreading apart. So you use cylinders that convey that. Um, and keeping the form simple also help makes them clear. At this point, I kind of realized that I made the shoulders a little bit too broad. He, the, the pose is kind of calling for shoulders hunched in and narrow. Um, and he kind of has superhero proportions. So when you're working with pen, there's a little trick that we'll use later to sort of fix that. Um, by drawing some cross contour lines and getting that, that fold um, expressed in the, uh, in the distance between the rib cage and the pelvis, you'll be able to um, help emphasize that. Since this particular ink is water soluble, I can take a water brush and I could kind of use it as an eraser and work into the background a little bit um, with just some water. So I've redefined my contour a little bit better um, that way. If I were using pencil, I wouldn't have to do something like that because um, it'll just, I could draw softer um, with that. And since, but since this is sort of a felt brush, that kind of matters. Um, so here, what I'm doing is kind of just using large planes for the hair and projecting them out from the skull, um, treating them not really as individual strands, but as, as big masses. And then um, I can't see the feet in the picture, but that's okay. I'm just gonna kind of use what I know about feet and from the angle of the legs to kind of improvise those and block them in. Um, you know, anytime you're using a reference, you may have to add to the reference or subtract from the reference to get something uh, more reasonable. And here I'm trying to define the, the sort of contours of everything and go through and pick up some of the folds and some of the overlap of the folds. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of work towards uh, the poster effect on this. And what that means is I'm going to divide light and dark and do a two-tone value study. Um, so anytime I see particular folds or anything that indicate this poster, I'm going to try to... Um, find those and get ready to draw those in. Um, and here I'm just going to do single direction hatching to kind of get that across. And since um, I've got a water brush, I don't really need to cross hatch or build up much value. I can then go in with the water brush and um, uh, spread all of this stuff around. So I'm kind of thinking of this as becoming a little bit of like an ink wash drawing or almost in a way, in a sense, a painting. Um, so I'm working in these sort of masses of tone, and it's a good way to, to go about it because it, it increases the speed of your quick sketch. Um, a lot of people use fountain pens for this. Um, Glenn Vilpe is famous for it. Um, but you can use um, this sort of brush pen and water brush. You could use watercolor. You could use watercolor pencil. I like watercolor pencils a lot just because they're fun to draw with. And... You know, you can also do this technique with them. Um, and when you do this, you're kind of reobserving and reinforcing what you've already set up about the form. So you're picking up extra detail if you can find it. You're creating masses and you're trying to get an overall sense of what the light is. And um, you're not trying to differentiate values very much in the darks. You're just trying to create a punchy um, two-tone approach. 
this is a totally different sort of seated position. You can see um, this person's cross-legged, a little bit hunched over. There's some negative space between the, the legs. Um, and one arm's very far back, one's far forward. So in this framework, we're going to try to express that curvature, you know, the, um, the lower back uh, um, turned, the hips tilted, and you're going to create a compression in the front. Um, we did a compression in the front directly facing us. Now we're doing compression from the side. Um, and here, the hair is going to be a big emphasis later. So we're going to, you know, nail down a, a little roadmap of our facial features and kind of leave it at that and focus on the hair later. Um, one thing you can do is you can pick up on some clothing. Um, anytime there's a closed figure, that's a great opportunity to use the clothing for cross contour lines. So where a piece of fabric ends, you can wrap across contour line. Where you see a seam, you can wrap across contour line. And that helps you express um, depth in a way that you would normally get with um, a nude model. Um, and I think that's kind of the advantage of drawing clothes. I mean, honestly, most of the people you encounter are going to be clothes. So if you're just out, you know, at a mall or something, doing some sketching, like people watching, um, you know, they're all going to be wearing clothes. So it's uh, helpful to kind of know how to approach that. Um, whenever you draw um, this leg in the situation where they're, they're crossed, the sort of second leg, you kind of want to at least have it in your head how that connects to the hip and, um, and pelvis so that you don't draw too long of, of a leg on the, on the um, sort of bottom side where it crosses over. Um, the hair in this case is a good opportunity to overlap and emphasize some dimension going around the shoulder and um, in front of the shoulder on the um, on the back side. So basically it creates a foreground, middle ground, background situation um, and the hair, it's sort of like a landscape almost of, of, a, of a person. So the, the shoulders in the foreground, you got middle ground hair and then you have the other arm for the background and you can use that to kind of emphasize everything. Um, I tend to skip around to different parts of the figure and kind of take multiple passes. Um, you know, the first time you draw something um, or go or take a pass through, it's not going to be perfect or correct. And so by using a method where you go back and forth um, and take multiple passes over a figure, it's going to be pretty effective. Um, what I'm after here is kind of this two-tone value study. So I'm not going to get too far into detail with the forms and with the garments and everything like that. I'm just going to get them sketched in and then go straight for the two-tone value um, and try to pick that up. Um, and you're wanting to get the, the shadows, the cast shadows and the um, shadow core, the sort of shadows that wrap around an object and make it seem dimensional and just indicate where they are and use the reference as a tool for how to get that. Maybe pick up a little bit of light on the toes that isn't actually there. Um, and then it's a seated figure, of course, so you have to have context. And so I couldn't see where this hand was, but I assumed it was kind of like leaning on a rock or something. So added that rock.